Isaiah chapter 13 corresponds with First Chronicles. And we're looking at the second advent. The burden of Babylon. Now there's Babylon in Isaiah's time coming up. But there's also a Babylon in the in the book of Revelation. Babylon is a, is not only a city, it's a religion. It's a religion that's crept into the churches. It's a religion that, that still operates today. There's great books on it. Babylon, Mystery Babylon. The two Babylons. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. So, a message particular to a, to a subject. Lift up Lift ye up a banner. That's a flag. Uh, a sign. Upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. Now the gates is the city business. The city hall of the, of the of the cities back in this time, where all business was was concluded, and there would be the judges and the people of fame, the people of 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 polit politics and office. I have commanded my sanctified ones. Here comes the saints returning. Revelation nineteen. God, Jesus Christ, turns to the bride. All right, mount up. We're moving. We're going. I have also called my mighty ones. For my anger. Listen, Jesus Christ, when he returns, he's not coming back as the Lamb of God anymore. He's coming back as a lion in the tribe of Judah with anger. And we'll see that in a moment. Even them that rejoice in my highness. That's us. That's the church. The noise of a multitude in the mountains. You know, there's a multitude that was followed Jesus in his earthly ministry. And there'll be a multitude of enemies of Jesus when he comes back. You know, they had multitudes following Jesus at one point. I believe Peter turns to Jesus, who touched thee? Man, we're getting thrown. We're getting elbow in the face. We're getting people kicking us. We're getting people pushing us. We're getting, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody's touching us. Like as the great, like as of a great people, a lot of people, multitude. A tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The United Nations. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. Joel chapter 2. It's the second advent. Getting together. Be Christ and his bride against the world when we come back. They come from a far country. From the end of heaven. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation destroyed the whole land. How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand. There's that day of the Lord. One of the prophets says a day of darkness. And we'll see why in a moment. <clears throat> it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. And there's been a couple of Christians in my life, you know, I can't wait to the day of the Lord. I can't wait to the day of the Lord. I had to show them the day of the Lord is darkness, is anger. And when the day of the Lord, we're on the other side of Jesus. And I had to explain to them that the day of the Lord ain't us looking for Jesus. We're behind Jesus coming back. 
and shall be a destruction from the Almighty. That's God. That's a loving God. That's not the liberal God. The liberal God don't have destruction. Is not angry. And is that's not listen. What we're reading about right now is not preaching your mega churches. This ain't done by the smiley white teeth people on the television set. There is coming a a government assembly against God. When Jesus Christ comes back, and then we're going to have a millennium, we're going to have a thousand peaceful year reign of Jesus, no curse, everything to its fullest. Satan is loose, and Satan gathers another army against God and his people. The Bible speaks of right now there are at least two world wars coming. And an intergalactical war, if you will have it, in Revelation chapter 12. Michael and his angels versus the devil and his angels. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. When they see, that's it. And it's too late. For especially for those that are coming out of the tribulation period and that got the mark, it's too late. And I'm going to assume, I don't know there's scripture, but I'm going to assume that there is some kind of warning on how deadly to receive that mark is. How simple that mark will be to receive on this planet Earth to get health care, to get food, to get a job, and be able to do business and get business done. But there's also got to be a, a thing that how deadly that, that mark will be eternally. And I don't know if that's going to be one of the 144,000 preaching events. They shall be afraid. This is at the coming of Jesus Christ. At the rapture, there's no fear for the world. They won't know what happened. For Christians, some Christians are going to be like, amen, glory to God. Some Christians are not even going to have any idea what happened at the rapture. And then there are going to be some Christians are going to be angry. You upset my plans, Jesus. I guarantee there will be Christians angry at, at, at the rapture. There will be Christians like, what just happened? And there will be Christians, glory to God, finally, Lord. And yet Jesus Christ doesn't come back at the rapture. The Bible it says those that are dead in Christ will rise first, and those that, that are alive will, will meet together in the clouds, and then we'll meet Jesus in the sky. Jesus doesn't come to planet Earth at the church rapture. He came to planet Earth when he was born in a manger, and he'll come to planet Earth on a horse. He came as a lamb. He's coming back as a lion. That lamb was simple and ready to die on Calvary's cross. That lion comes back. You're an enemy? Are you Jewish? Okay, you're safe. Did you mistreat my, my, my people? Hell. Did you help my people? Come with me in the, in the millennium. You got the mark, hell. And he separates the sheep from the goats at the second advent. They shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them and shall be in pain <coughs> as a woman that travails. Now mark that phrase somehow. Because that happens 17 times in the Bible. In the first place, Psalm 48, Psalm 48, 6. And we're going to see it a little bit often. But that Psalm 48, 6, that phrase as a woman 
with travail is a representation of the people in the tribulation period and when Jesus Christ comes. And here's the first place it's, it's talked about. First time it shows up, fear took hold upon them there and pain as a woman in travail. They say that woman giving birth is the greatest pain ever to be outside of third degree burns. Now we had one time my wife Lisa and I, we were in a hospital and there was a woman over across the hallway, next room over, and she gave natural childbirth with no medication at all. That woman screamed. And I remember Lisa turning to me, I'm glad I'm getting, I'm glad you're allowing me to get medicine. And God takes the pain that he gave to Eve in sorrow for rejecting what he said. And he says, I'm going to liken the pain of the tribulation period. And when Jesus comes back to that woman giving birth to that child, whether male or female child. I said that 17 times. As a woman in travail, they shall be amazed one at another. And their faces shall be as flame. Now look at chapter 9, verse 19. 9, 19. And we saw this before. Therefore, the wrath of the Lord of hosts, second advent, is in the land, darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of fire. No man shall spare his brother, Revelation chapter 19. This is the picture of the second advent to the enemies of, of God. That loving lamb. For God so loved the world that he gave, not when he comes back. Revelation 19, verse number 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire. That's the wrong time to be on the wrong side of Jesus Christ. You know, they have videos there of, of a nuclear holocaust with the bomb bursting, you know, houses being and trees blowing in fire. Now, that ain't a nuclear blast. That is the blast of Jesus' eyes. Behold, the day the Lord cometh. Hasn't come yet. Cruel. Both with wrath, second advent, and fierce anger, second advent, to lay the land of Israel desolate. Who's in the land of Israel? The Antichrist. And all the Gentile nations that again against the, the Jews in, in Revelation chapter 12, God has given her wings as a bird to fly. To a place prepared for her. Jesus said, pray that your flight be not in the winter on the Sabbath. The only Jews that are in the land of the of the land that God's given to a Jews have gotten the mark or sided with the Antichrist. Everybody else, we're out of here. The Jews are hiding out in, in the room in the wall like Rahab. He shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the consolation thereof shall not give their light. And you'll find this throughout the book of Revelation. Find it at the seventh year of the tribulation period it is absolute darkness. No natural light, no artificial light. And then the light. Of God, the light of Jesus Christ comes. No sun, no moon, no stars for light. And you'll find that throughout the scriptures. The sun shall be darkened in its going forth. 
It doesn't say the sun disappears. The sun's going to come up and come, but it ain't going to be lit. The moon shall not cause her light to shine. And there are places saying that that moon will be like blood. Total darkness. I will punish the world for their evil. And the wicked, now that's wicked people, but that wicked I have also said is the Antichrist, for their iniquity. I will cause the arrogancy of the proud, pride, to cease. At the second advent, pride is put down. Now, there are some say, well, there's good pride. <laughs> Not after the second advent. The, the king of the children of pride is locked up for a thousand years. And then when he's loose, oh, we can get Jesus. We can get, then that pride shows up and fire comes down from heaven. You're gone. And will lay low the haughtiness, that's high, that's wicked, of the terrible. Now we're going to stop right there. But I want interesting usher. I think it's, it says usher. He he gives in the Schofield Bible dates, and it says usher. U S S H E R. And I don't know much about the dates. And Schofield thought the dates, and many men that I've studied under have taken the dates. And yay or nay. And he has Isaiah thirteen. B.C. 713. Now we just read the burden of Babylon. And you can't say it's a city. Because in, seven, in B.C. 713, Babylon was not a power. 606. The Medians succeeded. 536. We're looking at a time period that Babylon is not really even Babylon. We're not talking about that city. We're talking about the system. And what is the system? All the religious relics that come. This goes back to Babel. When the children of Israel, I mean, when the children of man build a tower to get to heaven, not God. Like all the world space agencies, and they call it the dragon today. Oh, by the way, the dragon is in the next couple of days, it's going to drop its payload. They thought it was going to be in the Atlantic Ocean. But it's going to be in the Gulf of Mexico. And one of the payloads is a scientific experiment about marking. I put it in my Facebook if you want to get it interesting. They didn't, they've been doing scientific experiments above our heads in our space and, and cloning and marking from the dragon Space X. And Dr. Ruckman will always say, watch out for things that end in X. And I've been rebuked by a preacher, but hey, I, I, we don't belong out there. And we got a Babylon here where man tried to get to outer space to God, to heaven without God. Read it. And they built their own bricks. And God came down and gave us press one for English and gave us the Hebrew and the Greek. And, and it's called Babel because they don't know what the language is. And from Babel, we get Nimrod. Nimrod is Tammuz. Tammuz is happy birthday, December 25th. And Esther, the queen of heaven, comes out of all that. And, that. and that's Easter. And the queen of heaven that we're going to run in, in Lord willing, in Jeremiah, now you got the queen of heaven in the Catholic Church, Mary. It's a religious system of idolatry, following gods, mysticism, religion, occult, idols, imagery, and well, yeah, there's a city coming up, and God's going to use that city to, to conquer Judah for all their sins. And then they're going to be conquered, and in the midst of that 
there's there's a great golden structure that if you don't you know play the jukebox, everybody fall down and start worshiping. And then in the midst of that, close of Babylon, here is a, a, a king kind of king using the Lord's utensils for a big master don orgy of a party. Like the, abomin the abomination of desolation is going to be in the holy place where it ought not to be. Listen, history. History is going to repeat itself. And we're looking at the second advent of Jesus Christ. And it, it's not all cute little baby. It's the ferocious. It is the fierceness. It is the anger. And one of the angers of God is you've been messing with my people. And I recorded in Genesis chapter 12, I will curse them that curse you. I hope you believe that that woman in, in Revelation chapter 12 is Israel. Because if you don't believe that that's not Israel, you, you can't get your doctrine straight. You're out of whack and all this won't make sense. But like I said, the burden of Babylon, Babylon is not really a nation right now. It's a system. It's Babel right now. Babylon would come to, used to be one of the seven wonders of the world. Another part of the seven wonders of the world was the lighthouse in Alexandria. And you do know your perverted Bible, worldly, uh, modern Bible mess about Alexandria. Do You do know that. I hope you know Bible history and I hope you know church history. Because if a man don't know history, he's bound to repeat it. 